Hola, <ríe> mi nombre es Fernanda Carolina Silva Pinedo, Silva de mi papá y Pinedo de mi mamá. Tengo 15 años y soy de Saltillo, México. Strasitie, mi nieta es Fernanda Carolina Silva Pinedo, mi nieta es y ya es Saltillo, México. Ok, so I speak Spanish and a little bit of Russian. You probably understood most of it. Spanish from songs like Despacito or even Dora the Explorer. And the Russian part from living here in Uzbekistan. You see, when I was nine years old, the only thing I knew about the world was that it was made out of land, water, and people. Surprisingly enough, I never really thought about the different cultures and nationalities that existed. For me, Mexico was the world, my world, coming from a small town, just traveling around the state, and in some occasions, to the closest part of Texas from the Mexican border. I was never really exposed to the world, but, In 2015, my parents gave my twin sister and I some big news. We didn't know what to expect unless the news was going to be that my mom, pregnant at the time, was going to have another set of twins. <laughs> well, that didn't happen, but they sat us down and they told us that we were going to move to a country named Uzbekistan. I thought it was a made-up name, but They showed us beautiful videos and pictures of minarets and domes. Uzbekistan was like nothing I had ever seen before. But also something I realized not a lot of people knew about. I asked teachers and friends, and no one knew where Uzbekistan was on the map. Well, the day came, and my family and I had to leave Mexico. Five people, five passports, five tickets, and 50 suitcases. <laughs> oh, and I forgot, like a hundred packets of tortillas and chilies between our clothes, <laughs> just because we didn't know what to expect. I just remember that day entering the airport, just thinking how the next 24 hours would be like. We had about three layovers, and in each new plane we boarded, fewer and fewer Mexicans were present. It almost felt like we were in a different universe. People were speaking different languages, were dressed differently. They even had different ways of expressing themselves. A good example of that is right when we landed in Tashkent. As soon as the airplane tires touched the solid ground, everyone started clapping, as if they were thankful the pilot didn't crash the plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Right when we came in Uzbekistan, Tashkent, the environment was different. The first smell of the pioshka, some women wearing hijab, and a lot of people surrounding my parents, insisting and insisting on being taxi driver. Well, at least that's what I thought they were telling us. Well, after that, transitioning from my Mexican ordinary life to my Uzbek international life was a journey from learning how to communicate with my teachers and classmates in English, to being able to open my mind to different perspectives and cultures. After all, I was not only in a different country, but I was also starting in an international school with people from all over the world, from Thailand to the US to Australia, and even countries that just like Uzbekistan didn't even know existed. To be honest, at the beginning, I just used facial expressions to communicate myself. Yes, no, thank you. But later, after I learned my Vs and my Bs and how to say fish instead of fishes or boat instead of vote, I still don't see the difference. <laughs> It was easier to communicate. I was even able to learn some Russian words, French words, even some Korean words to introduce myself. I was even able to teach some of my classmates some Spanish words, like bonita or hermosa. Being in Uzbekistan, 
has also helped my family and I travel to different countries, like China, Thailand, Malaysia, since all of those countries are closer to Uzbekistan than Mexico. In all those beautiful countries, I learned so many things, from different cultures, different food, different languages, to even different laws in a country. From having to use two taxis for a family of five, to not being able to chew gum in Singapore. Being Mexican in Uzbekistan has also been a journey. You might know from personal experience or stereotypes, Mexicans are very loud. I remember one time when my family and I entered a taxi. Everything was fine at the beginning, but suddenly our voices started getting louder and louder. All of a sudden, it felt like we were in a party bus. And then the taxi driver turned and looked at us as if we were roosters or as aliens. I just remember that as soon as the taxi stopped at our destination, the taxi had this sense of relief, as if saying, Slava Bogum Yestiris, thank God we're here. <laughs> Being in a different country not opens your mind to different perspectives, but it also makes you miss your family members, because most of us have family members in our home country, and there's also some things that we can't really do here in Uzbekistan that we can in Mexico, or in your home country. But there's a good side to that, even though it can hurt sometimes. If you're not able to eat mango, avocado, tacos every single time you want, then it makes you, like, it makes you want to do it more and it makes you enjoy it more and take it less for granted once you are with your family members and you can do all of those things. The only way I can show and express how my point of view of the world has changed since coming to Uzbekistan is by looking at it as a bubble that bursts. Before coming to Uzbekistan, life outside of Mexico looked impossible for me. But once the barrier broke, the bubble popped, I was able to understand the world better. It felt like the world presented itself differently. Not only the way people talked or presented itself or also how they looked like was different, but also things like toilets or restaurants or even seasons like winter and spring are also different. Without my dad accepting this job offering in Uzbekistan, I would have never been able to understand the world in all these different limitless ways. Without opening your mind and heart to the world, you will never be able to understand it. Thank you and goodbye. Or how people think we say goodbye. Hasta